Good morning, Mainly Digger here. Uh, today, still not digging, the ground's still frozen, but we're talking about ghost stories of Maine. Uh, top 10 ghost stories, um, hauntings of Maine. Maine is a creepy place. It is the home and birthplace of Stephen King. Um, actually, no, it's not the birthplace, but it's the home of Stephen King. It's where he resides. Uh, he went, he taught, uh, actually he taught high school Probably literature there. I'm not 100% sure on that. But where all his crazy ideas and the landscape come from Maine. Um, so we're going to do the top 10. First top 10, all in every lighthouse is in Maine. There's 68 to 100 lighthouses in Maine. All of them have a creepy backstory. Something horrible happened. And it's the same horrible story. Um, the, a couple or family living in the lighthouse... He's a lighthouse attendant. Um, one of the family members goes crazy and kills either one family member or all of them, and it's haunted. Uh, it honestly, like that, doesn't surprise me. It's they're creepy. Like lighthouses are pretty, but they're creepy, and they're isolate, and people go crazy. Like people just go crazy. They go nuts. There's like a story about a piano, and the wife played this piano, and she only knew one. She only knew one song. And the husband was just like, I'm done, I'm done. And he killed her. Or first he, he took an ax to the piano and then he took an ax to her. So pretty much the same story for every lighthouse. They're all haunted. Um, the curse of the tomb of uh, uh, Colonial Buck, Colonel, Colonel Buck, sorry. Um, Colonel Buck was the founding father of Bucksport. Uh, Bucksport is extremely old, um, even before... It was formed. It was, it was an old settlement. But the story of, of the tomb is that there's two stories. One's the the PC version, where which brings the tourists and they, they look at the stone and take pic or the, the headstone and take pictures. And then there's the one that the locals tell in the bar and the pubs. Um, so the story goes, he accused a witch and of uh, being a witch and had her executed by. Uh, burning or hanging, depending on how the story goes. And her leg rolled out and she cursed him that she would always, she would haunt him to the grave or something like that. Um, so he dies years later. Uh, his family sets up this monument to him and this, the, this marking that looks like a boot uh, just shows up on the headstone. And it, they used to, have, I mean, I don't know if this is true or not, they used to have competitions to get the the uh, foot off or the boot off, and that I mean, they, supposedly they've replaced it multiple times. And it just looks like a watermark, but it's there, like it's there. Um, the non PC version is that he accused the witch of being a witch because it was his mistress, and she was going to expose him, um, or she was pregnant, depending on who tells it. But that's that's the non PC version. That's the bar pub version. So the third ghost story is Fort William Henry. Without a doubt, not even a doubt in my mind. This place is haunted. Um, it's been around since the the Revolutionary War um, and the French and Indian War, and it's like wars in Maine. We call them wars because it was constant back then. Like people were fighting, the British were fighting, the fighting the Indians, the French were fighting the British, uh, French were fighting some Indians. Like it's just the French and Indian Wars. Anyway, a lot of people who lived in the surrounding area around Fort Henry died because of this, because of the wars, because of Native American attacks, because of British attacks on the French. It was just a bad time. So this place, like it's really. Like it's castle-like and it's it's haunted like a hundred percent. I'm not like like I said a hundred percent in my mind that place is haunted. Um, number four, the uh, dead ship of Harpswell. Uh, there was a ship called the Dash during the War of 1812. Uh, the British ships couldn't catch it. It was it was a fast fast sooner. It was a sooner uh, fast fast little ship. Um, no British ships could sink it. They couldn't catch it. Uh, it had a record of 
15, 15 uh, ships killed and 15 and zero because it still was around. No ships could catch it. Uh, a storm caught it and it, it, it sunk the storm. And no one saw this ship for a long time. I think until, of course I didn't write it down. But someone sees this ship and they're like, oh, it's coming back. And I think it was like years later. Like two or three years later, they're like, oh, they found, you know, they're coming home, you know, ships, uh, you know, they, they're they coming in. It was in the, they saw it in Casco Bay and uh, they're like, it's coming home port, like arriving in the home port. It goes and goes and goes and goes and just vanishes. And then, well, and there's a, it's also cursed because supposedly whoever sees it, one of their family members is going to die. Um... But it is reported that it was seen, I forgot what date it was, but it was reported seen actually one time. Our fifth ghost story is, is the, uh, well, it's, it's the Alcatraz, they call it the Alcatraz of the East. It is the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard prison. Um, it was built or opened in 1908 and closed in 1972. It was a military prison. It first housed prisoners of war from the uh, Spanish-American War. And it is, it, it like, it is an opposing, it's still like, if you, if you drive um, Route 2 Alpha, 2, 2, 2A, if you drive 2A, I think it's 2A, across the bridge, I'm not 100% sure on that. That might be another ghost story. But um, you'll you'll see it. Like, it's without a doubt. And I've, I've worked on Portsmouth Naval Shipyard as a ship, or ship, filter, or ship, ship fitter and welder. And um, it's it's amazing. My, also, my mother was also stationed there. So, like, if you go there and you try to sneak in as a young teen, you will definitely see some paranormal normal experiences that you should not see like things get thrown around it's crazy it's also a federal offense to break into it um a lot of issues i would not say i would not advise exploring it because there's a lot of a lot of health issues uh there's still there's a, a bunch of asbestos still inside the building like they abandoned it and it like it's been abandoned ever since 1972 um, I, I think someone had actually came in and tried to, I don't know, they did something and it didn't work. Um, there's actually a documentary uh, filmed about it. It's called The Castle. A uh, little bit of history during World War II. There was a U-boat crew, German U-boat crew that was caught and imprisoned there. The, uh, the commander of the crew, because of the conditions were so bad and they were treated so bad, I guess, they sent him to Massachusetts, and while he was in a, a county jail in Massachusetts, he slit his wrist. He committed suicide, and um, he, he died. But I know this because, well, yeah, I worked at at um, Portsmouth Shipyard, but I did. I was for three months. I was at Fort Devens, and there's a POW camp there at Fort Devens, or not, there was a POW camp, and there was a and there's a POW. Um, cemetery so i went to go look at the cemetery because i like creepy things creepy old things and there's this guy's name and with a plaque and explain what happened and it, it's it's a weird connection between why i worked and where i was stationed um that i didn't know about it until I, I saw it so number six maine has the oldest recorded ghost story or ghost sighting in the united states a uh and uh, it's actually in Sullivan, Maine. Uh, 1799, there was a, a a reverend reported seeing and wrote a book about it, seeing a a 20 year old Nellie Butler roving around. Who he'd been dead for he'd been dead for a while. So like it was a ghost, like 100 percent ghost. And he took the witness statements of 33 individuals to include himself and he wrote a book about it and it's re the oldest recorded document of a ghost in the united states um 
all the old colleges in, in Maine and some of the new colleges have, all have ghost stories. And that's number seven. All of them. Um, Colby College, Bangor College, or Bangor, I forgot what it's called, Orno. There we go. There we go. Um, Gorham. The, the, the list goes on. They're old. Bates. Bates has a lot of ghost stories. All of them have ghost stories, and they're all pretty much the same same story. Um, female gets pregnant, commits suicide. Um, guy loses girlfriend, commits suicide. Uh, girl gets thrown out of... That's, that's a story that happened m multiple times at multiple campuses where a girl gets thrown out of her building or she jumps out of a building to commit suicide. Uh, and that's that's all campuses on Maine in Maine, like pretty much all have a ghost story. Um, Haynesville Road, Route 2. There we go, 2 Alpha. I don't know what the other route is, but this one's 2 Alpha. It's creepy, and it looks creepy. Uh, in Maine, we call them kissing trees where the road, the you have two trees, and they bent over and they kiss. That's what it's like a lot of, most of the way on that road. Uh, there's been a lot of accidents on that road and deaths, deaths. So like the main ghost stories, you have the a lady in white who will stop you and ask you for, for help. Her husband's trapped in a car, so when you go to help her, she disappears. Or a little girl with the same story. Her parents are trapped in a car, and she disappears. Um, it's a creepy road. It's a dangerous road. It's, it's not, yeah, it's creepy. And that's number eight. Number nine. Ghost of Fort Knox, probably the lamest ghost story I have ever heard in my entire life. Fort Knox is an imposing fortress. It is a fortress, never used. Um, it's huge, never used. No one died there. Uh, like in the Civil War, or not before the Civil War, War of 1812, I think it had volunteers. And then in the Civil War, a unit from Connecticut came up and manned the fort. After that, it dropped off to one guy, a care a, a caretaker, and he worked there for 18 years. And he would do patrols, two patrols each night, go to the local store, buy a six pack, or he would buy beer, I don't know if it was a six pack back then, and then go home. Apparently he haunts it. Lamest haunting ever. The uh, lo place looks scary. It looks like it should be haunted. And there's been a couple of paranormal investigations that I've, I've watched. And, like, they, they're scary, but, like, there's no history to it. I mean, there's no... It's the lamest ghost story ever. Um, and number 10. Not scary. Probably the... My most favorite ghost story haunting ever. Because it, it's, it just reeks Mainer. Like, it absolutely reeks the typical Mainer. So the ghost story goes, it was a ghost from the Revolutionary War. I don't know where, I don't know when. But there was a big American victory. And dude drank way too much and either insulted some British troops and they killed him or he was so intoxicated he fell off a bridge and drowned. Either way, it's Mainer. Like, that is how Maine people are. Oh, you got a scary gun? You got a scary knife? I'm going to talk smack. Oh, you're trying to kill me? Oh, well, whatever. I'm drunk. You lost. We won. Whatever. Or he fell off a bridge. Still Mainer as heck. Like, that. that's, without a doubt, the most main, main ghost story I could, I could come up with. Um, good news is, ground's supposed to be, well, it's supposed to be 50 degrees on Monday and Tuesday. That's digging weather. And hopefully the ground is thawed so I can go dig. And I don't have to make these videos anymore. As much as I love making history videos, I love metal detecting more. I cannot wait to go metal detecting. Cannot wait. It's been a week. It's only been a week and I'm like, I need to metal detect. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Mainly dig out.